Hello everyone. Today we have another lockdown deck, but it has a really cool, unique twist on it. And I, I apologize. I know that lockdown decks aren't necessarily fun to play against, but for me, they're incredibly fun to play because you can really restrict that board state and control what and how the opponent can play their cards. Uh, going all the way back to beta days, I think my first infinite deck was a Captain Marvel lockdown style deck. There were a lot of different changes at that point. So like Lady Sif was a two cost, Ghost Rider was three. And so then you could really do some like absurd power uh, presence on the board. But regardless, lockdown has always been one of my personal favorites. And I think this is a really, really cool take on it. You'll notice that one of the harder to acquire cards, Silk, that not as many people have, is in this deck, but it can easily be replaced by a Lizard. Lizard is not gonna be quite as flexible because having that ability to push and slingshot power into those lockdown lanes can be so incredibly beneficial. But if you don't have it, Lizard should do just about as well. Now the rest of the deck has your one cost drops that can scale, so your Sunspot and your Nebula. Fantastic for gaining value over time. We have the Storm, and then we also have Absorbing Man. So some, some games, we're going to do Storm on three to take the, uh, the opponent off of our track that we're planning on doing a Legion Lock, or maybe we just don't do a Legion Lock, and we can impact the board state with our wide ability cards. Then we can follow up the Storm with an Absorbing Man, and then maybe we Legion the Absorbing Man lane. Maybe we end up not legioning, and then we leverage uh, Captain Marvel, a Vision, um, our our Jeff, our Silk, our Doctor Doom, all of which can go incredibly wide and impact the entire board, threatening every single lane, every single game. And so overall, very fun list. I really enjoy this style of archetype. I think it performs really well in a number against a number of decks. But this one is a personal favorite. I was running the Storm Absorbing Man combo. As soon as Absorbing Man was released, I was working on a like no no turn six for you style deck. And I think this takes it up another notch. And so we're gonna go ahead and jump in. Thank you guys as always for all of the support. The last couple of days, we've nearly tripled the number of subscribers that we get on a daily basis. Um, and that is because of you and your support. So if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. It helps out, it helps me out, it helps the channel. And I appreciate having you guys here. We're gonna go ahead and jump in. Thank you guys as always for being here. I hope you guys enjoy. And so I don't know specifically if Me Cool is a bot or not, but it has been confirmed that there are some bots in Conquest. Uh, what? How do you guys feel about that? I know that this was advertised as a truly competitive mode where it was gonna be no bots except for the first time through. That way you get a feel for that mode. Uh, I'm wondering if maybe they saw the lower player counts than they would have anticipated. Uh, leading to needing to insert bots into those conquest games to keep queue times relatively low. I don't know, um, but it, it definitely doesn't feel feel great. Maybe with global matchmaking that will change. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not a fan of the bots in conquest. Like it, it does give sometimes some easier wins, but sometimes the bots are super strong too. So they have the Calling Wing that discards their Wolverine and then the second one that discards a Swarm. We do have our Nebula protected. I don't know that we necessarily needed to do that. It felt right. We are going to be able to use Legion into the Vault to lock down the game after turn five. And so we're, I think we're going to do a double Silk and then maybe a double Captain Marvel, depending on where Silk goes. Um, because double Captain Marvel, even though they move independently, so they can't both move to a location to win it by 10 power, each one can move to see if it's a win condition. If not, they'll stay in their spot. So multiple Captain Marvels gets a little bit iffy, which is where you see a lot of questions of like, why didn't Captain Marvel move here? I think it's still going to be our most solid play. I'm going to do Captain Marvel into the vault to push the silk out, but then they could push this silk in. Hmm. Maybe we just do double Captain Marvel anyways. Worst case scenario, we can throw a vision onto the board. We'll see. Okay, so far so good. Their Dracula pops over into the vault, but their swarm pushes both of our silks out of that location. Um, they have one more silk. They still have a lot of cards in their hand, but if they do a Modoc, that clears up this that clears up their hand, giving their Dracula something really substantial to pull into. I don't know if we do Legion into maybe Sinister London, Olympia. I'm going to do the Vault. Just so that they can't dump their hand on the last turn. But a Modoc here or a double Modoc into having that Apocalypse is big. If they keep one of their Swarms, then their Dracula discard is going to be a lot less consistent than they would want it to be. We also have Jeff if we need to move our Silks. See what Miku plays. 
Okay, so a triple drop. So it's not the Modoc, but they do get rid of a lot of cards in their hand. We'll see if any of these are discard. Okay, the double Morbius is big. This double sword. No, not the double because we changed it to the vault. So it's going to be a single there. And then the swarm comes down, leaving quite a few cards in their hand. Um, now, right now, it looks like we lose the vault. But Captain Marvel, one of the Captain Marvels should move, I think. Actually, no, we can't count on the Captain Marvel because I don't know the ordering between Captain Marvel and Dracula here. And so we're going to throw Jeff, old Jeffrey, into the vault. He continues to have value. I try to build decks without Jeff, but right now in a lockdown heavy meta, he is so important in being able to get that additional pressure against the opponent. So we're going to do Jeff here and we'll see. We have a pretty big lead in the right lane, so I think we can win mid and then maybe our Nebula will be over their Dracula power in the right lane, depending on what they pull. The Apocalypse is not a good start. We need it to not hit Apocalypse again, and it does. <laughs> what are the chances of that? Pretty, uh, pretty low. <laughs> Lady Deathstrike looking to absolutely massacre the Draculas. All right, we do have the Storm and the Legion combo now. So let's do Sunspot. We will snap into it. I don't know. The double, the double Apocalypse discard. It's a 25% chance each, and so it's a, like a 12.5% chance that it does back-to-back, -back, I believe. So we have the Sunspot. We get Camp, Lay High. We're not going to use... We're not going to leverage that resource. I think we hold the Jeff. We could play it now, but if we're planning on doing Legion, there's really not a like a, a big argument for us playing Jeff early. We want to leave it as maybe a surprise factor. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do Armor... We may storm the right lane next turn, depending on what they play. Ooh, Gambit is um, a little bit unfortunate. What did they discard? Ooh, they discarded their Dracula. Beautiful. All right. So the storm into the Legion. We could also, if we didn't feel comfortable about the lockdown, we could do storm into like Captain Marvel, storm into Jeff plus Silk uh, to get some additional reach. We can always leverage like that Doctor Doom to lead to reach into those hard to reach or locked down locations, um, un except for Professor X. Professor X is still really tough against for this style of deck. Now we do have the ability to go wide. They discarded two cards, <clears throat> one being the uh, Apocalypse, so I think we go Legion here. They might be able to outpower us in the left lane, but we'll see. Okay, Swordmaster is kind of scary as a start, and then Swarm. We do still outpower that right lane with a Soak next turn. We don't quite win in the left lane, though. Do we lose this one? So this would give us four, five, six, seven. It puts us at a tie here. We lose this one. Okay, Sanctum Sanctorum is ours. I can't believe we're down this low, uh, this early. All right, so they skip on turn one. I think they only have Blade in their deck as that one cost uh, discard. Monster Island gives us a little bit there. Let's do the armor to protect the Sunspot just in case they randomly pull a Gambit that fits perfectly with their curve. The Swarm out on two is awfully strange into switching cards. No storm for us, unfortunately. I don't even know what to say to try to justify that. I can't. Um, I just I can't justify it. Um, it's it's like little RNG things, and I I know that not all of you may have been here since beta or since the beta days, but at one point there was all of the bots were like cranked up to a thousand, where no matter what happened, it was you were gonna get the bad RNG flip. You were going to get, they were going to have the perfect counter to your cards. Uh, your cards would get destroyed in uh, Danger Room. It was very oppressive. It felt like an awful time to play. Um, this feels a lot like that did. Where everything is just like a small like chance, but it just so happens that it rolls against your favor. Um, and in Conquest, that is something that's so difficult. And the reason that bots in Conquest scare me is because it, you could lose your tickets in the time that you invested into the, into the mode. Like that. All right. We're going to do vision. Uh, we might bump Silk over into the left lane. We should win that left location. But they have the 12 power Apocalypse that's going to come down here. We do win here. 
So 12 power here. I don't know that uh, we can beat this lane. What does this <clears throat> equal into? I believe this should be 26. And so we'll go ahead and do this. If they have a, a, a random spare Jeff, I'll be so frustrated. Uh, but this should give us the win. We're going to claw our way back. I'm going to go ahead and throw Silk into the Nebula lane. We don't necessarily need the Sacred Timeline. If we get it, great. Wow. Um, Blade mashes the one out of <laughs> the one out of four Apocalypse, unfortunately. <laughs> the, these RNG outcomes are just so consistently bad for us. All right, let's do Jeff into the Central Park lane. I don't want Silk to just cap out that location. I want that flexibility. So we're going to put Jeff there so we can move him out later, uh, as opposed to playing the armor in that in that slot i'm gonna do armor and sunspot now is this the dracula coming down especially with apocalypse already being hit that's uh yeah that's scary this is always a fun line right i'll have one more space to play maybe another one over here too actually no no that should fill up the board yeah maybe not in sacred timeline would be the only one we would be concerned about let's go ahead and do it I like the I like the Legion on Central Park. It's just enough uh, frustrating <laughs> that it might work for us. No, it's not going to. Okay. Oh, maybe it will. So the Wolverine discard forces into Central Park, and now they're capped out. The Chavez that they draw next turn will go into Central Park. We're gonna get the scale from Nebula to go up to uh, plus four over them. Their Morbius will go up by two. So we should win left and right, even though we have no chance in mid. Okay, so X-Mansion comes down. We do have the Storm and the Absorbing Man, so we can lock them out of two locations by the end of the game. So if they decide to discard their Swarm and their Swarm package, then we can really restrict what and how they can play. The Bifrost is an interesting one. I don't know if that's, I don't know if it's good, but it's interesting. Let's do Silk. It doesn't matter where we play Silk. She's going to ping pong around the board. She's one of my favorite cards. It's just a 2-5, but it's the mobility of that 2-5. So it's like a Captain Marvel. If you can control where it's going to go, you're going to get the benefit of a Captain Marvel, but for two cost. Uh, I absolutely love the card. Do we get greedy here and do Storm into Absorbing Man? And then we can hide our Captain Marvel. We won't be able to get Nebula down. But we can get some decent reach. The only issue is going to be potentially Morbius over there. I don't actually don't think this is pro like I don't think this is the best play for us, in all honesty. But let's go Absorbing Man to copy the the flooded lane on the last turn or last two turns. We have the Vision and then maybe Captain Marvel plus something. If we get Doctor Doom, that's fantastic. Uh, Jeff is also going to be pretty good at uh, allowing us to have that extra reach. So Lady Sif comes down, discards the Apocalypse. They have, uh, they can get some really big reach in like a Modoc plus Apocalypse eventually here. Oh, no, they can't. If they play for the Flooded Lane, I th think we have a shot. Otherwise, it's something like this. Or even something like this. Into a last turn uh, Captain Marvel plus like Nebula. Kind of like that. With Absorbing Man being five, I think we can potentially pressure that middle location from a MODOK play. So I think we're okay. They do opt to play into the Dark Dimension. I think our play here is going to be move Vision into the Flooded Lane. I think that is going to be the one that potentially needs the most assistance or the most help. We have Captain Marvel that can uh, use that buffer, but I think we're fine in the Flooded Lane. And so now we're just looking at high power. We're trying to outpower the Morbius Lane whenever they do a, a double or triple discard. And I think the Vision plus Captain Marvel plus potentially Silk could do that for us. So we have the Captain Marvel. Silk bounces over into the Flooded Lane, which is massive. They do get the Modoc, um, which hits the Swarm. Maybe this last one is, no, just the Apocalypse. Okay, no, that's fine. We didn't even need Captain Marvel to go higher, further, faster. We win the left lane, we win mid. We stage a comeback, but it is a little bit suspicious. Let's jump into battle number two. See if we can get somebody that feels a bit more human. All right. For our next opponent, we have Pro X Snapper. And I'm feeling pretty good here. 
if we pull into Legion, it copies Sakar. I think next turn uh, we would potentially storm lock the rest of the game. Um, if we pull into Storm, fantastic. We have our Nebula on board. The only bad one is Absorbing Man, and that is unfortunate. Invisible Woman um, could be the uh, the Hella Resummon deck that we posted yesterday, where we just blasted through the Infinity Gauntlet or Conquest. Now, that deck can suffer from potentially the regular Surfer that runs Cosmo, runs Polaris to pull the Invisible Woman, um, also, things like Arrow, Juggernaut, Stegron can definitely hurt that deck quite a bit. So, whoever wins Baxter Building right now gets extra power. I almost think we do something like Armor over there. Maybe we do Armor in this lane. We do Storm and then Legion in the right lane. That's what we're going to stick to for now. But we'll see. Gambit! Aha! <laughs> I have no idea what kind of combo they're running, but we dodged the gambit, and so we're going to go ahead and snap on them. Uh, just throw in a, a little flex. I don't know what this card could be. Seeing the gambit, it could be uh, Cerebro 3? No way. They discarded the swarm, so that's free. That's two free swarms that they have on the board. Oh, no way. This is a Cerebro 3 deck. And they just boom, they, they got the one out of five swarm discard, which is beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, no, not Cerebro 3. All right. The Geats, the second Gambit. <laughs> the second Gambit does hit the, uh, it does discard swarm once again. So they have three free swarms to play on the board now, which is very unfortunate. Um, I'm a little torn between doing something like Sunspot and Captain Marvel or just doing Legion to lock down and hoping that the flexibility from Jeff can bring us home. Let's do the Legion lock. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what we get. I'm still very curious what's behind the Invisible Woman because the Gambit plus Absorbing Man, this could be something like a Luke Cage hazmat build, which has some merit, but with Cosmo being as common as he is, they do flood that right lane with so many swarms, I imagine. Dracula in mid is okay, right? No, we can't beat the right lane. It's not okay. Nothing is okay. We are not fine. All right. Super unfortunate. This could just be a discard deck. Super, super unfortunate. RNG, you blessed us yesterday, so maybe this is your way of paying it back. I honestly feel like when anytime I play on my main account right now, I just get absolutely blasted. Like, I can play the same deck, the same opponents, but I just do worse on this account. And it's probably just in my head, but I've convinced myself. Maybe it's the aliens that have been confirmed to be on Earth. I don't know. It's a wild time we're living in, guys. Okay, so the Morbius in danger. Ooh, they took a risk. It's not a bot, or else the bot would not have played there. We'll take it. We will take it where we can. Um, Seeing that they're... I actually think they're a Hella Resummon deck. Like a hybrid Hella Resummon deck. I almost think we go ahead and storm. We do have Vision. Uh, we have Doctor Doom. We have Legion if we want to play it into Danger Room, but I don't know that we do. Let's storm the right lane. Uh, maybe we get... I don't know. They're going super heavy onto that Danger Room location. They're wanting to get power there where they can. But I think we're all right. All right, we do get Nebula. So fantastic. Let's go ahead and snap into it. We have the, um, we have the Vision play that can get us power into the danger room without having to worry about it. If they have the, what, MODOK? I don't know that they would have risked the Invisible Woman there with the MODOK. I don't know. They do use lead, they do use magic on us. So now we have a potential use case for our Legion. Maybe we throw Legion on the board on six instead of on five to kind of throw them off of our track. Maybe. I always I always like the, the little cheeky play for that. Um, magic would make sense in a Hella Resummon deck, right? Okay, so they go left lane with Wong. I don't know. I don't know. So, we have the guaranteed 8 here. Do they do Gambit? Gambit could be scary. We could do Legion in the left lane. Or we could do Legion into mid. Legion into mid is kind of fun because then everything they play here has a chance to die. Has a chance to get destroyed. I think we're just going to do this. 
We're going to do this and hope. Um, the Legion in the left lane will take away that limbo. They're not going to get that extra turn. We may steal four cubes instead of two. You can be lulled into a false sense of security with limbo on the board. They do go two cards, one in the right lane, one in the left. What do we have? We have the Collector and then Gambit hitting the double trigger. Uh, Apocalypse once will buff up the Collector, unfortunately. We lose mid because it hits our vision. And uh, now I understand because I've I've heard a lot of you guys in like in my Discord or just in the comments say that it feels like the game is against you. I could I could see that at times, um, and I didn't ever really notice it before. But the difference between this account and my other account, I don't know why it would be that way. But the difference between the two accounts is feel like it feels night and day, uh, which is not where you want to be at. By, by any means. Ooh, we do hit Storm in Sakaar. If they have magic, then they can take that away right away. Um, we're going to hope that they don't. We also can't do our Absorbing Man into any of the lanes. Apocalypse is interesting. And the locations are going to switch. We can't do Absorbing Man, uh, which is mainly in the deck, to copy Storm to have that double lock. Then we can leverage like Captain Marvel, Vision, those sorts of cards. Let's do the Nebula into... I want to say the Morbius lane. That's where I want to, that's where I think the cards may switch to. Oh, so they go ahead and just leave that lane locked. But they don't have any way. Oh, Gambit. We're always worried about a potential Gambit. Okay, so let's go with the Captain Marvel. She'll be a roving resource as long as she does not get decimated. It'll be a roving resource. Uh, the Wong into Gambit or Wong into Gambit into Absorbing Man uh, into potentially Odin is just so tragic i'm sure i i'm fairly certain that they have the odin oh the wong oh ah it's not great it's not good it is not good we can either legion we could do vision i think we're gonna legion and then we'll doctor doom a legion doctor doom and and hope that's gonna give us quite a few cards across the board so captain marvel has uh less chances of being demolished by a double gambit um we'll see they could opt to do a gambit this turn into maybe an odin if they don't discard the odin this time and with the swarms with the apocalypse they always have that endless uh combo so it is a little bit unfortunate if they have swarm they discard it if they double discard it here oh my god we're in for the ride of our lives. This is gonna be what, an eight trigger? Well, you guys, when faced with adversity, what better way than to go into this loss? We we charge into defeat head first. We're gonna commit all the way. To be able to do the eight trigger, they have to have a swarm or an apocalypse, and they have to have gambit, of course. Okay, so just one, just, just one card. They do have the gambit, they always have the gambit. Oh no! All right, can we hit the right lane? The right lane one time. The right lane one time. They ran out of cards. With the odds, <laughs> when the odds are stacked against you, you just rush in head first. Uh, we need a couple more of those, but this gambit is very scary. We need to get an armor on the board. That way, the gambit triggers can potentially hit duds. That is, I think, our only chance uh storm into absorbing man those lanes that are typically free wins for us are now threatened um every single turn the rocks are not fortunate for us we do have storm we have absorbing man we have to hope that maybe they get the same bad rng that we're getting and they're going to be looking at a handful of rocks or they just don't draw their gambit that is their biggest like win condition and they've had it Every single game setting up into like the Wong, into the beautiful, beautiful Gambit play. We need them to not get it. One time. One time. We need them to not get it. The Morbius in Pet Mansion is big. It's a little bit scary. The Raft, we could have been... I mean, actually. If they do have Gambit, we have... We have... Decoy targets for them. The Raft is uh, a little unfortunate... There's no way that we can cap it out first. I mean, we could try the rock method, but it's not... I don't think it's worthwhile. They're going to go for it, though. Oof. So maybe, with the Invisible Woman over there, with that second card, 
Maybe we do second storm in Subterranea. We start working on locking them out of the game. They'll have a very limited amount of space to play. Now they could have magic. Very likely have magic. Um, I guess it's the, I guess not very likely. That's kind of a, a bold statement. I'm comfortable with this risk. We're looking at a handful of rocks though, which is very scary. The second storm comes down. The last turn that we can play into this middle location now. The raft is free. Ooh, Absorbing Man hits nothing. Interesting. Interesting, my friend. <laughs> we could cap it out and then not be able to go anywhere. Uh, let's do Nebula into the flooded location. And I'm actually going to, no joke, throw down three rocks. Because, <laughs> because if they have a gambit, uh, let's snap into it. If they have a gambit, I want to give them decoy targets. We're going to have almost the whole board filled up. And it's going to be hard for them, a gambit, to hit anyone in particular. This is what it's come down to, guys. We're, we're leaning in on the rocks. We don't want to get rocked right now. Dr. Doom is going to be great. Ooh, the gambit just outright hits a rock. Beautiful. You, you, you fell into our trap. But we know that they don't have gambit here. So they're going to have to lean in on like a heavy discard. Maybe they have. They only have two cards in hand, though. So the Morbius, can it get more than an extra seven? That's eight discards. I think that's, I mean, maybe. With uh, the right setup of like a Wong into something, potentially. Ooh, we're back in this, you guys. These matches are like night and day compared to yesterday's, where it was just blazing fast, 8 and 0, oh, in and out. And I think that's a pretty big difference between gold and the Infinity Gauntlet. I feel like in the Infinity Gauntlet, a lot of like people are playing it aggressively. In gold, it's like a lot, I'm finding it a lot more tedious and slow and a little bit more meticulous. And it's just a little bit harder overall. Okay, Lake comes down afterwards. We do get armor. So, I mean, we know Sunspot's going to be protected. If ever there was a chance to snap, we're going to load up this lane and try to have four cards there by the time a gambit comes down. That way, as many decoy targets for them as possible. The invisible woman comes down into this right lane. As long as we don't get hit with bad RNG in this right lane. Okay, can't play high, it's fine. Storm. Okay, we, get, we have the double storm uh, multiple ways. Multiple ways for the double storm. Let's go storm here. Next turn, we'll do the Absorbing Man, because that's going to be more power than uh, <clears throat> just the base Storm. Into a turn five, like Jeff plus Silk or Jeff plus Nebula. The Killmonger is not going to be able to hit our protected Sunspot. What a beautiful, beautiful play. All right, let's absorb in this right lane. Unless we think we can outpower them with the Legion combo. Um, doing Absorbing Man here would give us one additional turn to then leverage our Legion. But I don't think that's our, I don't think that's our strength. I don't think that is where we're gonna shine here. I think the absorbing man in the right lane, ah, that's unfortunate. He's gonna be the line or the play. He, they can't play in the left lane, so Jeff could just win that one if in lieu of a gambit play. So maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was hasty. Maybe I spoke a little bit too soon. We're gonna go with the uh, we're gonna go with the good old Legion lock, which I didn't think we were going to. We're gonna go with the good old Legion lock, and then the Jeff is going to save the day. If I had a, a quarter for every single time that Jeff was able to save the day, wait, that could be magic. No, it can't. Uh, it's invisible woman. Unfortunate. Um, if I had a, a quarter for every time that Jeff saved the day, I would be a little bit more well off than I am now. This could be Gambit. And it's the, it, there is a chance that this ends our run. So I guess if it hits Jeff, no matter what we lose. So we always, I, it doesn't matter where we play it. We're just going to have have to hope that that's not a gambit back there. They did use Invisible Woman. So it has to be, what, a two cost Morbius? Yeah, beautiful. That is where we shine. And we are in and out, done and dusted against the gambit who had us rattled for the first couple of rounds. Had us absolutely rattled. We're going to take the win. Just jump into the next one. All right. Next up, we have someone. I'm not sure who, but we have someone. And the faster we get in and out of this one, the faster they will be someone that we used to know. 
And the only bad thing, I really enjoy the lockdown style archetype. The only bad thing is it creates very slow, very meticulous games um, because it's just so, you know when you win or lose. And so you're getting less eight cube, big bursty outputs and a lot more two and four. Wait, <laughs> I claimed our mission and uh, we queued into a normal match. That was, that's All right, so next up we have a hexagonal robot. I still can't believe I queued up into into a, a, a regular ladder match and thought it was the last battle in gold and that we had them that we had them bamboozled. All right, and so we don't know what they're running, but <clears throat> we have both of our one cost drops. We have the armor to protect it in the left lane. We have Captain Marvel and Silk to move around the board and uh, just be able to pressure the entire thing without knowing exactly where that power is going to be. Um, I'm I'm confident enough to snap into it. Okay, Oscorp Tower is not great, Ooh, but Storm is. Storm into the Oscorp Tower. It should be a free location. We can do Nebula plus Silk. We can eventually do Captain Marvel. If we draw into Absorbing Man, then we're going to Absorbing Man uh, either Lake or Camp Lehi and just really start restricting where and how and what they can do. Negasonic is um, a little wild. A little unfortunate, but a little wild. We get Legion, so we're not going to be able to use the Legion onto the flooded location. We could use them on turn six, potentially, but I think we're going to do Nebula plus Silk. And the good thing about this middle location is that we can threaten power there without ever playing a card. They're running a destroy deck, um, so they probably have Killmonger, right? We're going to make it where they just can't play here. Um, Vision into a last turn, maybe Captain Marvel. Sounds marvelous to me. I would try and snap into this, but we've already snapped. We feel we feel fairly confident. They could do uh, ooh, the Nimrod into into the Negasonics, kind of cool. But that pushes here and here. They can't do anything to threaten over here. This scales, and so we actually don't need to move the vision. This scales up by two. I don't think they can push anything else to the side, but 15, ooh, they could do a destroyer, right? Destroyer would put six power in mid, and a lot extra in the left lane. Do we maybe do this? Do we maybe pivot a little bit? Yeah, they can get cheeky with a destroyer. We're gonna do vision into mid, let's see. That is not what we thought. Okay, the Bucky Barnes, fine. Carnage, fine. We have the right lane. Wait, why did they stay for that? Wild. Wild. With the vision, definitely a wild call. Knowing that we scale over here, we'll take it. But we have a couple of things working in our favor in this match. So if they're doing the Nimrod play, a lot of times we can potentially lock them out with the Legion. Um, that way they just can't do anything. Uh, we do have Absorbing Man here, so we can always storm into Absorbing Man storm into legion with the super flow we're going to be able to do that uh, much earlier than we would normally we just need to draw into our resources martage is great for the doctor doom i was a little bit afraid for a second but it's great for the doctor doom i am a little bit afraid to do legion so we're just not not legion silk there's one hair just that one hair <laughs> okay they do get killmonger that's unfortunate so it's not the, I guess, all-in version. Maybe it's just more of a like consistency or attempt at a consistency to destroy deck. We are a little sad to lose our Nebula or our, our Sunspot, but it's not the end of the world. I think we go Captain Marvel. We have the double Doctor Doom. Do they run Galactus? Are you a Galactus enjoyer? It's unfortunate we've already accepted the snap, but I'm very certain that this in the left lane is going to be a Galactus. No. It's a null. Okay. We take those. We take those. I really thought they snapped into the wave because they had a Galactus. We're still in the game here. What do we want to do? I think we just slam, right? We slam as much as we can into mid. Next turn, we're going to do a Doctor Doom. That'll spread wide. We have the Silk. We have the Jeff. We have the Captain Marvel to impact the entire board state. The only, the only concern we have is the Nimrod, but I think even that is okay. We reveal first, so a Negasonic's not a concern for us this turn. Maybe next turn, 
But we do, of course, have uh, the Doctor Doom that we can leverage in whatever lane to impact all three. All right, so they do th drop three cards on us. Let's figure out what they are. Ooh, the Deadpool is interesting. Deadpool into Venom gives Null a decent amount of uh, decent amount of grasp or reach. The Carnage in the left lane is fine. I think we're gonna do Doctor Doom into mid. Doctor Doom into mid pushes here, here, and Arnold Zola. No, Arnold Zola onto the Null potentially would be 16 over here. We could potentially beat that. I don't know if we move our Jeff. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit shell shocked. I don't. I, I think we just leave Jeff where he's at. I think he's perfectly fine where he is. Arnold Zola. Arnold Zola. We could potentially beat that depending on uh, where Silk goes for one. And then where, uh, I guess mainly just where Silk goes, because then Captain Marvel could potentially move that way. Beautiful. That's all we needed. But that is it. We are done and dusted with that round. The Silk bumping into the left lane was exactly where we needed it. It was a 50-50 of where it was going to go. It did hit the high roll, allowing our Captain Marvel to have enough reach in that lane to get a win. Let's go. And we do get the Humble Retreat. If you don't have Silk, again, you can replace it with the Lizard. Should be just about as good, just not quite as flexible. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. This has been TLSG. Later, guys.